Showtime Championship Boxing is back in the fight sphere, the Mohegan Sun Arena, for a triple header of fights brought to you by Premier Boxing Champions. The night begins at 9 p.m. Eastern. That is 6 o'clock Pacific time. Again, for a triple header of fights. The first fight that will open the broadcast, a world title fight as the IBF junior bantamweight champion. You know him as Pretty Boy. Jaren Ancajas, of course, defends his title against Jonathan Rodriguez. The co-main features two fighters who really throw with bad intentions. Uh, you've got the unbeaten Amandas uh, Stagnonias taking on the former world title challenger, uh, Thomas DeLorme. Uh, so you have that as the co-main. And then the main event, you talk about a rising star in the welterweight division, Jaron Boots Ennis, out of that fighting city of Philadelphia, uh, takes on a former world champion in the Samurai, Sergey Lipinets, in the main event of the night it will be another night of meaningful fights on showtime championship boxing that comes your way uh april 10th of course the whole event uh will be presented by and promoted by tgb promotions now you're going to hear from both of the fighters uh in their camp uh, as they prepare for this, we're going to allow you, members of the media, to ask them questions. All you need to do is hit that raise your hand bar icon there on the Zoom. Greg Domino from Showtime Sports will acknowledge you, and you will be uh, more than welcome to uh, ask questions to both of the fighters. Now, before we get to the fighters, hear what they've been doing as they prepare for this big matchup, which is really uh, an important fight in the welterweight division. Uh, let's hear from the guys who helped pay, put this whole thing together. And we'll start uh, with the Hall of Famer. He is the president of TGB Promotions. He's Tom Brown. Tom? Thank you, Brian. This really is a terrific fight. And this is one of boxing's fastest rising talents. He has the kind of style that just makes great fights. Tremendous hand speed, punching power. He switches from orthodox to southpaw which makes it very hard for his opponents to prepare for a fight against him. But he'd be taking up a big step up in class against the former world champion, Sergey Lipinets. Lipinets always comes to fight. He's a seasoned, aggressive fighter with serious punching power. In his only loss, it was a title defense against Mikey Garcia. Lipinets landed the bigger, harder, more punishing shots. You could see it on Mikey's face after the fight. So he can make it a tough night for anyone. And this fight will show us whether Ennis has the goods to be the next big thing at 147 pounds. Thank you. All right, Tom, thank you very much. And of course, uh, aside from Tom, uh, the man who helped put all of this together uh, is boxing's best friend. Of course, he is the, the president of sports uh, event programming at Showtime. He is Steven Espinosa. Thanks, Brian. Um, we are really excited about this card and actually the whole weekend. Uh, for Showtime, it is a big fight weekend. Uh, Friday night, we've got a, uh, the, the launch of our light heavyweight tournament from Bellator MMA as part of our three consecutive weeks, our, our launch of Bellator MMA on Showtime. And then three intriguing fights, three meaningful fights on Saturday night. We open with a world title fight. And, and that shows the depth of this card and the quality of that card. Uh, you can look at uh, across the networks and all the various platforms. You don't see many cards with a world title fight three fights down. And it should be an all-action world title fight with Ancajas and Rodriguez. Then we go to the co-feature, looking at uh, fast-rising young welterweight Montes Danionis against the veteran Delorme. That's one that, given those two styles, ex expect all action. And, of course, the main event. This is uh, one of the premier fights on the schedule this spring. It's something that fight fans have been looking forward to ever since it was uh, first identified as a possibility. We've seen Sergey Lipinets on Showtime several times. He is an all-action fighter. He is aggressive. You know exactly um, what he does when he gets in the ring. He is all action and a big puncher. And as for Jerron, um, 
Boots is the same type of, of fighter. All action, aggressive. This has the makings of a real war. Um, two highly, highly accomplished guys in the welterweight division. We just may be seeing uh, who is the future in the welterweight division when we're done with this card. Brian? All right. Well said. Thank you, Stephen. Well, let's hear from the fighters. That's why you guys are here um, joining us. Uh, and we'll start with the young man who's fighting out of Philadelphia. He is unbeaten, 26-0, 24 uh, knockouts. He had a 16-fight knockout streak uh, that was ended in his last fight, not because of him, because of a clash of heads. Um, and obviously, uh, a disappointing uh, end for him, but he's anxious to get back into the ring. He is known as Boots. He is... Jerron Boots Ennis, uh, and of course, joined by uh, his trainer, of course, his father, uh, Bozy Ennis as well. And Jerron, before we get into some of the questions, please let members of the media know how training camp has been going for you and your thoughts uh, with this fight against Lippin Yates. All right. Uh, what's going on, everybody? Uh, well, uh, training camp been going well. Uh, we're pre preparing well. Uh, just ready to rock and roll, ready to shine, and uh, take over this division. It's, it's my time. And uh, with this fight, uh, this this the fight that's going to take me to the next level and, uh, and bring out the skills and my ability and stuff that y'all never seen before. And y'all will see an uh, amazing, strong, sharp fighter, a punishing performance, and, you know, getting that knockout at the end of the night. And I know uh, Sergio Levin, that's, he, uh, he going to come forward and be right there in front of me. And his style, that's perfect for me, and it's, his style is clash is perfect with mine, and he going it's going to run into his shots all night long. <laughs> Bozy, obviously you've trained Boots his entire life. Give us your thoughts on how training camp has been going, and, and your thoughts on this fight as your son takes on the former world champion. Oh, the training camp been going well. We you know we work hard every time we 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 get into this. I mean, plus he he never's out the gym anyway. He stays in the gym. So I don't have to worry about looking for him or telling him it's time we got a fight coming up. So we always we stay ready all the time, and we we doing a lot of different things that we you know we, we don't we did before, you know what I mean. But now we just stepped it up a little bit more because Sergio Levinet is a is a good fighter. He's not he ain't no walkover nothing like that. I don't you know look at him like he's an easy fighter nothing like that. This this guy can fight, so I respect him. You know what I mean. And his trainer too, Joe Joe uh, Goose. And that's my man, matter of fact, because my son Farah was with uh, his brother Dan Goose under him at one time. Fantastic. You know? thank, thank you very much. All right, so let's talk about the man Boots will be facing, known as the Samurai, Sergey Lipinets, 16 1 and 1, uh, 12 knockouts. He is the former world champion at 140 pounds. Uh, Sergey is joined by Alex Vasefield, who, of course, is like his manager, um, always there by his side. Uh, Sergey, again, uh, give us your thoughts on how camp has been going and your thoughts on facing Jerron Ennis. <laughs> Шоу-тайм, мистер Спиноза, моим менеджерам, моему тренеру Джо Гузену, всем моим болельщикам, всем болельщикам бокса. Хочу сказать спасибо Джару Неннису, что взял этот бой, что мы будем драться. И кэмп проходит отлично, мы тренируемся, очень тяжело, делаем всю работу, все проходит супер. Значит, с нетерпением жду боя и... Ждем экшена в 10 апреля. Hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Al Heyman, uh, Showtime, management, Joe Guzan for being by my side through all that hard camp. Um, well, the camp, the camp is going real well, and it's a hard camp for the simple reason is that it's probably easier to get a, 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 a someone uh, that looks like me for Jerome uh, by the way, uh, thanks, Jerome, for taking that fight as well. Um, then me getting someone like Jerome to, to spar with. So, you know, we had to bring uh, a lot of people in to uh, choose, choose and pick, and it's not easy. It really, it's, it's 
it's a hard, hard camp, and we we digging in real, real deep. Hmm. Alex, uh, give us your thoughts on and what you've seen because even though Joe obviously is his trainer, you're always there by Sergey's side and watching him on how you've seen camp going for uh, Ennis and what you think about this fight. Well, this camp is, like I said, it, it really stands out from the other ones that we had for that reason, the same reason that you know I just mentioned what Sergey just said. Uh, it's real tough to get someone that will look closer to Jerome Ennis. You know, it, you're never going to get a carbon copy of who you're fighting, but still, you know, get someone that, that that athletic and that, you know, that physically imposing guy, uh, it's not easy. But we managed, we managed a uh, real good sparring camp, and uh, we had guys that look close, not that close, but, you know, whatever – we're getting ready for whatever Anis is going to bring in. We want to make sure that Sergey can answer. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that, uh, you know, um, um, Jerome thinks that Sergey is going to be sitting right in front of him and, uh, you know, it's going to be an easy target to pick on. I mean, listen, uh, you know, it's all in the eye of a beholder and uh, we'll see how it plays down in the ring under the lights. Uh, and, uh, look, I made the best man win. You know, that's what I say. Absolutely. Should be a fantastic night and a fantastic fight. Well, let's let's get to some of the questions in Boots. Uh, I'll start with you. Uh, what's it like to finally now be in the main event uh, on Showtime Championship Boxing? Um, It's it's a great feeling. I just want to uh, thank my team, you know, uh, Showtime and, and uh, Cameron Duncan and uh, Mr. Espinosa and the rest of you guys, and I appreciate it. You know, like I said before, I'm excited, and this is this, this is my time, and it's it's the perfect time for everything. And it's after this fight, it's on to uh, bigger and better, and and I just can't wait. Uh, a Alex, and this is for Sergey. Um, Sergey was quoted as saying, "I believe Ennis sees me as a stepping stone. That's going to be a problem for him." Tell us what does he mean by that. Uh, я за тебя говорил, что он, он думает, что ты uh, ну, просто как ступенька, чтобы пойти вперед. Да? Но ты мне, я сказал, что это может быть ступенька, которая слишком высокая для того, чтобы... Uh, как ты думаешь, почему это может оказаться проблемой? Ну, потому что uh, я uh, перешел из кикбоксинга в бокс. Uh, я не имею таких талантов. Там не супер бьющий, не супер быстрый, не супер умный, mm -hmm. но все, что я умею, это тяжело трудиться. И я mm -hmm. впахиваю в зале каждый mm -hmm. день, каждую минуту, выкладываюсь по полной, тренируюсь тяжело и не жалея себя. Поэтому э, надеюсь, уверен, что это да, покажет в Риге mm -hmm. моей той долюбе. Well, it may look like... Uh... You know, I'm, I'm right there in front of you. It may look like uh, I'm a tailor made. It may look like uh, something that I'm slower. I'm, uh, I'm not that fast on my feet. But one thing that I'm good at is working hard, getting into your chest, and doing what I do best, punching from every possible angle you can see. And the one that really going to hurt you is the one that you won't see coming. So if you overlook that specific aspect of the game, that you're dealing with the guy that a hard worker, not afraid of anything, and it, like I said, it, nothing is going to uh, make me scared at that point when I'm going to be in front of him, uh, you know, might, you might trip over. That, that, that stepping stone could be a little bit too high. And, you know, to say that you're already 27 and 0, 25 knockouts, you're putting that burden on yourself. I mean, it's it's up to you. I mean, it's good. I mean, that's probably something that motivates you. But uh, all I'm saying is that I'm going to go in there and give you that hell of a night. Boots, uh, what's your response to that? Because, you, yeah, you have been quoted about saying you're excited to have an outstanding performance. What's your response to that? Um, like I said before, it's just, this is my time, man. Uh, I'm ready to rock and roll, whenever he bring, I'm gonna be ready for it. And we don't look at nobody's stepping stone. I'm we 
this is the this fight right here is gonna take me to the next level. And they will see and like I said, I can do a, a bunch of different things and they don't they don't know how I'm gonna come. And just just know I'm ready and I'm working fight up. This might have been the hardest I've been working ever and I've been waiting for this opportunity for a very, very long time and I finally got a guy with a name and now it's just my time to shine and uh and just show the world the rest of my talent and show them that I'm really nothing to be played with and I'm a dangerous man and they will see on uh, April 10th. You, you know, the only criticism, Duran, that you've really received uh, up to this point was the level of opposition. Do you feel like now, especially facing Sergey Lipinets, you can quiet those critics? I mean, they, every time I fight, they always say, it's a step up, it's a step up, it's a step up. And then when I do what I do, Oh, he need to fight somebody better. So at the end of the day, I just work for myself and, and my family and my team uh, and just better myself each and every time and get better each and every fight. And like I said before, I just work harder and harder every time so I can perform to the, uh, my best ability and, and show the world every fight that I just get better and better and stronger and stronger and, and smarter and smarter. And they, like I said, they will see. And, they, and let, let me say this, uh, right. Every time he fights somebody, they say it's a step up fight. So you never can please nobody. You know what I mean? You can't please nobody at all. You know what I mean? It's a step up fight. This is Sir, Sir uh, Livinet. He's a good, hell of a fighter, man. You know, we don't we don't really look past him. You know what I mean? We just figure it's our time. That's all. He had his time. It's now it's our time. That's the way we look at it. You know what I mean? Got it. I think he. I think he's a great fighter. Uh, respect, um, Sergey. You know, Boots has never really been past six rounds. That's how dominant uh, he's been. Do you think this is the fight where not only he gets tested, uh, but has to learn how to swim in deep water, so to speak? Мы готовимся ко всему, что предложит теннис. Он отличный боец, очень умный, быстрый. Я думаю, что он тяжело готовится к этому бою, что он работает и больше 12 раундов в спаррингах. Я думаю, что он будет готов к этим 12. И мы постараемся сделать все, чтобы выиграть в каждом раунде, а не ждать пока сможет ли он э, работать больше или меньше. Поэтому у нас э, все идет как, как нужно. Well, uh, he looks like a full package. And is that, I mean, Jerome does. And uh, he can punch, he can move. He does all that stuff real well. And uh, uh, I'm sure that more or less he's, he's getting ready for 12 rounds. So if he's going to go past six, all right, past six, eight, <laughs> I'm sure he's going to be ready. I'm going to be ready. Ultimately, our main goal is to give it a good fight, you know, put up a great show. And again, like I said before, made him, made him in, best man win. That's all there is to it. You know, it's just, a, it's hard to predict anything uh, on, a, on, a, on a level like that because he does belong to the top of the division. This is nothing to look Possibly. It's all the rest of it. Uh, Sergey, in your last fight uh, against uh, Custio uh, uh, Clayton, it ended in a draw. And I was looking back over what some of the mem members of the media wrote about the fight. And they said Clayton slowed your offense in the later rounds with his jab and his movement. If that's the case, how do you beat Ennis? who is quicker, has better movement, and stronger than Clayton. They say that in the past fight, you are because of the fact that the opponent has hit you in the last round with his jab and his movements in the ring. Uh, uh, Jerome is faster than that, and faster than that, and better than that, and faster than that, and faster than that, and faster than that. How can you do that? Ну, не хотелось, оправ... не хотелось бы оправдываться насчет ничьи, а, но на самом деле а, нам меняли три раза дату боя, 
мы, мы, мы долго готовились к этому, почти полтора года, все это тянулось. За две недели до боя нам еще сказали, что мы деремся совсем в другим. Потом поменяли вообще дату еще раз. Потом поменяли соперника. И соперник сам поменялся. Во-первых, он дрался в одной манере, а потом, как начал драться со мной, встал в другую манеру, совсем по-другому боксировать. И не скажу, не скажу, что он э, был какой медленнее или бьет слабее, чем Джерон. Это отличный боец, хороший соперник. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, not looking for an excuse, but that fight was prior to that fight. We were getting ready for. You know, we were in a camp for like almost a year. Uh, they changed opponents on us continuously it was complete i mean one guy and then another guy and then another guy finally uh real close to the fight they said this is the guy you're fighting i can't say that uh um uh, clayton hitting less harder than jerome does or moving worse or better than jerome does he's a good fighter he's a good fighter this is the fighter that you need Uh, a full camp to get ready for. Uh, and and um, I was injured in that fight. You know, it just uh, my, you know, I injured my hamstring in the third round and I, it really, uh, uh, you know, made my ability to move a little harder. But it, 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 it's not an excuse. I'm just saying that if you look at um, uh, uh, Clayton's fight prior to that fight, He was fighting coming forward, trying to take someone out, uh, uh, being first, uh, engaging first. For some reason, with me, he started moving, boxing, and didn't try to get me out of there, okay? Uh, look, you, like I said, writing is on the wall. I mean, uh, I'm not gonna say anything about Clayton being a bad fighter or Jerome being a better fighter. It's a, it's a, It's a elite of the 147, and the, the guy that I just fought still lost me eight rounds to four. We, we watched that fight over again and over again. That's all there is to it, but it, it, it is what it is. Mm. Um, Jerron, um, you know, obviously your, your last fight against Van Heerden, you, you were really hoping that, hey, a victory over a guy like that um, uh, really elevates – Uh, your career, I know you had to be disappointed with that one ending after the first round with the clash of heads. So what do you think then this fight against a former world champion and a fighter like Lipinets then does for your career after this? Uh, at, like, I, like I said before, after this, at, well, uh, me beating uh, Lipinets, that's, that's taking my uh, career to the next level because he was a former world champion at 140 and uh, he fought a lot of top guys and, and me being him and making a statement on him is, is that's a whole different level right there. And that's, that's boosting me all the way up. And I feel like after this is, is bigger and better things, but you know, we got business to handle on April 10th. Mm. Uh, Sergey, the same question to you. What is a win over uh, a fighter who many believe is the future of the welterweight division? What does that do for you in your career? Ну, я привык драться с лучшими, самыми хорошими бойцами, поэтому я просто, мне просто нравится боксировать, драться, mm -hmm. и я с удовольствием иду в бой и беру бои тяжелые, и, и как вы видите, ни разу у меня не было легких боев, mm -hmm. я не ищу легких путей. Well, first of all, you know, um, I just fight. And then uh, if you look at my career uh, and how I started and how I was uh, going through the, through the ranks, you know, I've done something that uh, a lot of people didn't, uh, uh, you know, thanks to uh, my team, include, you know, and uh, the 13th fight, I became champion of the world. Uh, and I don't have that pedigree as other guys do have. So all I do, I just like to fight. And then I like to fight. I like the challenge. 
and Jerron is the challenge. So I never said no to the fight. I never, um, you know, hesitated or start thinking twice about it. Um, the, the only thing is, like I said, I just love to fight and I love to fight the, the best. And he's one of the best out there right now. And it, should I win? You know, you're just going to prove my point. You know, I'm, uh, I, you know, I, I belong where, I, where I'm at right now. Mm. And, and Boots, we'll wrap it up here. Uh, you were quoted as saying, being this being my first main event, I need a spectacular form, a spectacular performance. Does that mean you're starting a, another knockout streak on I mean, April 10th? I mean, it's, it's you know, uh, we don't go in there looking for a knockout in it, but if it pre presents itself, we're going to uh, go ahead and take take that advantage and the opportunity and get them about it. But, you know, the main, co the main goal is just to look sharp, be on point, uh, having my fun and doing what I do best. And that's, that's uh, uh, being phenomenal and being sharp and, and getting the knockout at the end of the night and, and putting on punishing performances. So that's the goal. Now, I know members of the media, you've got a number of questions. Uh, if you have questions uh, for the fighters, whether it be Boots, whether it be uh, Lipinets, hit the raise your hand uh, icon there on the Zoom. Uh, we will acknowledge you. You'll be able to ask your questions. Also, if you have questions for Steven Espinosa or Tom Brown as well, uh, they're available as well uh, for your questions. Greg Domino from Showtime Sports uh, will take it away now. And Greg, uh, I know that members of the media have questions, so let's get right to them. Yes, thank you, Brian, and, and thank you to all the media who have who joined this afternoon uh, to see Ennis and, and talk to Ennis and Lipinets. Um, so we'll we'll get started here. Our first question comes from Keith Eidek of Boxing Scene. Uh, yes, my first question is for Jerron. Uh, Jerron, did you happen to see Lipinets' fight against Clayton, and if so, what did you think of it? Um, well, I actually don't then get to see. Uh, I don't watch guys that I fight. I, I leave it up to my team because you never know how uh, a guy is going to come out. Just because he did one thing with that guy, that don't mean he's going to do it with me. So you, you got to prepare yourself all the way around, and that's what we do. And uh, But, yeah, uh, he's he a great fighter, though. But, I th like I said, it's, it's just my time. And He's obviously a, a step up in opponents for you. How significant of a step up do you feel that this is and why? I mean, it's a great step up. Uh, like I just said before, he a, he a former world champion at 140. And he uh for top guys and and me being him and making a statement on him is that's like I just said just it's gonna take my career it's gonna skyrocket my my um, my, my everything rankings just uh fight fighting other uh, opponents and stuff like that too like better opponents and stuff so it just just the one right here and and y'all gonna see. John, who would you say has been your most uh, either difficult or dangerous opponent so far? Um, uh, I'm 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 not sure you can't say because when I'm in that ring I, I control. Uh, the guys and I, I uh, do what I want to do. Uh, some fights you might see me fighting on the inside. Some fights you might see me boxing. Like, it, I just I do what I want. And I control the guys. I make them do what I want them to do. So uh, I, don't, I don't know. I can't say. <laughs> okay, thanks, Jerron. I just have a question for Sergey. Also, Sergey, um, a, a lot of top welterweights have uh, shied away from fighting Jerron Ennis or outpriced themselves or whatever the case might be. What made this the right fight for you at this time? Много отказывались, ну и боксеры отказывались бороться с этим. Что подбудило тебя взять эту битву? Я хочу стать чемпионом мира. Мы деремся за пояс. Все мечтают о поясе, и я хотел бы быть чемпионом мира в двух весовых категориях, поэтому мы деремся. Well, ultimately, you know, we all want to become champions of the world. And uh, this is uh, one way to do it, to fight guys that will put you in a position that you can't be denied anymore. And that's the bottom line. Uh, you know, Jerome is not a boogeyman. He's just another fighter with two hands and two feet, you know. And uh, we, 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 that's what we're doing. We're fighting. And just one other thing for Sergey. He he thinks he won eight rounds of the fight against Clayton. Is that what he said before? Yeah, I 
мы смотрели и насчитали 8-4, но отдать должное, если чуть-чуть добавить, mm -hmm. даже 7-5 хорошо. Well, yeah, uh, even during the fight, uh, uh, I thought I was up ahead, but uh, then after the fight, you know, I watched that fight again myself, then I watched it with Joe Guzan and my team, and uh, that's the way we looked at it. At, at the worst, there were seven to five. I mean, first seven rounds, I was just, it was all me. I mean, and then my hamstring started, you know, acting up. Slow down. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Keith. Uh, next, we'll go to Dave Jahal of The Boxing Voice. Hey, Jaron. Hi, Sergey. How's it going? You guys good? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, good, good. Um, so, Jaron, first of all, for yourself, uh, considering the rankings of the welterweight division, um, and a win for either yourself or Sergey, would you be pushing for world titles later on this year? I mean, it's quite a significant fight in the welterweight division, isn't it? This fight with Sergey. Uh, most definitely. I feel like, uh, yeah, uh, not looking past Sergey Levinets and, and me doing my thing on April 10th. Uh, but yeah, definitely. I feel like end of the year uh, or beginning. Yeah, I feel like end of the year uh, should be able to get a shot. Yeah, I mean, with the with the rankings at the moment as well, this fight could catapult either person in contention. And looking at the rankings as they are, who is is on your sort of list of, of fighters that you want to fight in terms uh, of the uh, rankings? I mean, like I just said, not looking past Sergey Levinets, but you know me, I fight any and everybody. All I got to do is call, and I'm hungry. And and like I said, I've been waiting for these type of fights, and y'all gonna y'all gonna see. Good stuff. And, and Sergey, um, same question for yourself again. Um, do you think you can be in world contention after this fight and get back up to, to world level? I think if it happens, you can fight for more fights, with other champions and so on. I don't think about it yet. Now I think the most important thing is on this fight. And then we'll see what will happen. I don't really, I don't really care where that fight is going to take me at this point. I'm not thinking about what's going to happen after that fight. I'm thinking about what's going to happen in the fight. And that's all I care about right now. I got Jerome Anis to, to, to deal with, and, uh, you know, it's not an easy task. Uh, and it will, after that, we'll re you know, recommence that conversation. Good stuff. Thank you uh, very much, guys, and best of luck to both of you on, uh, on April 10th. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, next, we'll go to R.L. Woodson from Bite, Bite Down Boxing. The floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, first question for Jerron. I just want to know, uh, we got a lot of excitement in the division last week with um, Ortiz and Hooker. Uh, you're positioned in, all of, in most of the uh, three of the four uh, ranking sanctioning bodies. Uh, any pressure to kind of maintain the excitement, you know, coming off of last week's fight with uh, Ortiz taking out Hooker? Uh, no, I ain't no pressure. I, I, got, I don't be worrying about other people. Uh, I just focus on myself and uh, how I can better myself and and prepare for my fights and get better uh, and sharper and smarter and stronger each and every time. Okay. I just ask because I know you're a bit of a showman anyway. But mm -hmm. um, final question to you. Uh, how do you maintain focus? We see you chime in from time to time at the champions in the division. Uh, but how do you maintain focus uh, – and, and intensity in, in, in your preparation when it seems like the business at the top of the division is so difficult to get anything done, which could affect you at some point. I mean, well, at the end of the day, like I said before, all they got to do is call. It ain't, it ain't hard to, for me because, you know, I'm saying yeah to any and everybody. And all I, all I want to do is, is fight, win, and be great and be a, a legend and a, a multi-division world champion. Gotcha. Uh, question to uh, Sergey. Uh, salute to you for taking this fight. Um, like I said, with you being a world champion already, uh, it is kind of. Uh, it looks a little interesting to see a, you fight a guy who we would think is where you you've already come from. But 
Uh, speaking on the Castillo fight or Clayton fight, um, anything coming out of that experience? I know you just spoke on the injury, but anything from that um, experience that changes your approach to fighting Jerron and, and everything that he brings to the table? Показал мои ошибки, на чем нам нужно работать. И отдохнув, приехал домой, я начал исправлять. И здесь мы уже третий месяц находимся в нашем кемпе и работаем над ошибками. Ну, as always, you know, every fight you fight, you you learning and uh, you making mistakes. You nobody is perfect, and uh, the question is how to uh, correct those mistakes. And that's why, right right after that fight, even uh, before I knew that I was going to fight uh, um, Jerome, I came back to the gym and we start working on uh, those uh, little mistakes that I made with um, Clayton, but. Uh, the main thing that uh, I did learn is how to fight one leg. Greg, is uh, Mr. Espinosa still on the call? I'm here. Yes. Yep, I'm here. How is it for you, um, you know, provided that uh, Jerron wins this fight, you know, what does this mean for you and what you want to do with Showtime Boxing and having such a player, you know, in the mix in, uh, you know, one of the better divisions in all of boxing? Well, w one of the things that we enjoy most is is sort of build helping build the fighter. Um, our audience likes it. You know, they like it when they can see guys over and over again and watch as a fighter matures. And that's what happened with Sergey. We had Sergey on on one of his early fights. We saw him all the way through world title, um, through big fights. With Boots, um, we're, we we've been proud to work with Boots and Bozy and and and. Uh, you know, in their promotional team, um, as he grows from a young fighter on a highly regarded prospect on Showbox, now we're seeing another big step in his career as a main event uh, on a championship fight. So I, I think what Booth says is accurate. You know, if he's able to win, um, his credentials put him up at the top of the division. You know, and, and the same goes for Sergey. The winner of this fight deserves a high level fight. You know, th these are two guys at the top of the division, two of the most exciting fighters in the division. And whoever comes out on top is due for a, a world title shot in the very, very near future. Thank you. Congratulations to everybody. Looking forward to fight night. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next we'll go to Cole Whiston from uh, Boxing World Weekly. Hi guys. Um, this one is for uh, Jaron. Um, twenty six fights by the age of twenty three is quite a lot. I was just wondering how many times you'd like to fight this year after this fight. Um, this uh, you you gotta stay uh, active and and that that keep you sharp and smart and and uh, each fight you learn something new and you you get better and you go back to the to the gym and, and work on those things and just uh. Maybe three or four fights, whatever, this year, you know, just staying, uh, stay active and busy. Uh, that's about it. Um, and now a bit lighter of a question. I got to know, where does the nickname Boots come from? <laughs> uh, um, when I was when I was younger, my real nickname was Boops, B-O-O-P-S. And uh, my mom gave me that nickname. And when I was going to the gym and stuff and playing around in the gym and my dad was telling me to come here or, or stop doing something, they thought he was saying – a boots like the shoes, but we was he was saying boops, and ever since then we just changed it and kept it that way, and it just stuck. That's with me. awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. I like the sounds of it. Uh, Sergey, I also have a question for you. Um, being a former world champion, some would say that that was probably your best performance. But uh, if it isn't your best performance, I'd like to know what your best performance you think is. <laughs> Uh, 
the most time I was from. Well, uh, I think that my first fight under Joe Guzan was Lamont Peterson would stand out as my best performance because of the styles that uh, we brought into that into that ring and uh, uh, Lamont being already established, you know, world champion, two-time world champion. Uh, it was a definitely bigger name than I was. It, that's what I think was the best performance I have had so far. Awesome. And uh, same question goes to you. Where does the nickname Samurai come from? Я начал тренироваться, тренироваться в России, так как я из Казахстана, я выгляжу чуть как азиат. И ребята из зала за то, что я не сдаюсь, всегда дерусь с ними, со старшими ребятами, стою в парах и не боюсь ничего, лезу в драку. Они меня назвали самурай. Well, when I was a kid, uh, uh, I was a, you know, I was born in Kazakhstan, and I had that little uh, uh, Asian look in my face. And uh, um, when I was moved to Russia, uh, it's a small town when you had to establish yourself. And uh, I've had a lot of fights, uh, uh, always bigger guys. Sometimes it was two at a time. Sometimes it was three at a time. But yeah, uh, win or lose, you know, I was um, always fearless, and I was coming forward and. Uh, fighting them and um, that's why they start calling me samurai because of my intensity my my, my sheer uh, will to to win and uh, get up on top that makes sense thank you guys and good luck on fight night all right thank you thank you thank you thank you cole uh next we'll go to john cutney of reddit boxing hi how's it going guys there you go uh, first question for Boots. So um, some fighters who turned pro after the Olympics seem to have the red carpet rolled out for them. Mm. Uh, do you feel like you've had to fight harder to get to the top level? Do you feel you have something to prove compared to other young fighters? I mean, uh, you could say that, but at the end of the day, uh, everybody have different uh, roads to the world title uh, championship, and mine just taking a little longer than others, and I don't mind it because at the end of the day, I'm still learning. Um, I'm young, and I'm getting better. Each and every fight, I'm getting stronger, smarter, faster. I'm just and I'm learning new things. So, I feel like I'm fine with the way that it's going. And I feel like everything is happening for a reason, and it's perfect timing right now. So, okay. So, a uh, related question. So, um, you're on, you know, roughly 16, 17 fight knockout streak, depending on how you count the Ben Heerden fight. You know, you're known for your flash in the ring. There are tons of highlights of you all over social media. Um, do you? make an effort to try to distinguish yourself in the sport as a star in that way? There's a big, you know, youth movement in the sport, lots of young fighters coming up, or are you primarily focused on just, you know, building up the rankings in your division? Um, just, uh, I'm not, I'm not worried about, you no know, like outside things. I just, like I said before, I always worry about myself and how I'm a better myself and take my career to the next level. I'm not worried about no outside things or extra stuff like that. All I do is stay in the gym, and uh, like I said, just work on how I'm going to get better and, and sharpen up and, and smarter and stronger. Okay, another quick question. So you're a great switch hitter. Uh, can mm -hmm. you talk a bit about that? Do you have a preferred stance? Um, are you ambidextrous when it comes to other things like writing, or is this just a thing of boxing? Um, it's, that's with everything. I do uh, – I'm, I'm good with both hands with everything. And uh, when I'm switching back and forth, I don't, sometimes I don't even know when I switch. It's just natural to me. It's a natural ability. I just be in there – in the motions. Okay. So one final question for you. Um, can you say anything uh, about your current managerial promotional situation um, and sort of related to that? Do you expect to fight on Showtime or PBC platforms in the immediate future, or is this a fight by fight thing? Um, we're just going to continue to do what we're doing now and just, uh, you know, just going and take, uh, taking it one at a time and, and till I get to that, that level, the next level. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so regarding uh, Sergey, uh, BC did a great job of <laughs> asking all the questions I had prepared. So a quick one for uh, Tom or Steven, which is just, um, uh, there's a great co-feature on this, Delorme versus Stan Ionis. Um, they're both guys who have been in the mix as potential opponents at different times. Is there uh, an intention of trying to build up uh, demand to potentially match the winners, or is that just another you know, good welterweight attraction fight? 
Was that was that, was that a question to Sergio? Or? Oh, or sorry, that was for, was for uh, Stephen or Tom. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Look, um, Senores is a is a is a promising young fighter. Um, he, he's at a, a much earlier stage in his career. Um, you know, down the line, um, you know, you never know what happens. Um, you know, nothing's guaranteed on April 10th, but uh, in the future, like, would it surprise me that if, you know, in, in a couple of years, we're, we're talking about Boots and San Jonas as, as two of the top guys in the division, based on what we know now, it wouldn't be that surprising. So, uh, you know, it, it, he, he was put on the card because, uh, you know, we're, we're sort of looking at, at two of the young, promising welterweights in the division. It wasn't really an idea of matching the two. I think Boots has his eye on a title fight um, in the near future, and that's probably the direction that he'll go. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, John. Uh, so thanks, everyone, for being so generous with your time today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, John. Uh, and uh, we have time for two more questions, uh, so we'll, we'll toss it to Carlos Torre now for the next question. Thank you, everybody, for taking time to talk to us. You know, first question for Jerron. You know, Jerron, we kind of have seen you, you know, knock out and dominate your opponents left and right throughout your career. But when it comes to a guy like Sergey Lipinius, do you view this as a fight where you could potentially see yourself or, or foresee Sergey, you know, forcing you to dig deep or, or fight harder than perhaps any of your previous opponents has? I mean, we don't know. You, you got to see uh, when, you, when we get in that ring. I've been fighting at 47 for a while now, and he he was fighting at 40. So we, we gotta see. Uh, I know he's a great fighter. I know he's gonna come for it. And like I said before, we, we prepare all the way around the board. So whatever he brings, and whatever he try to do or switch up or anything, we we, we prepare for it. A couple of questions for for Sergey. You know, Sergey, at the start, uh, very early on in the call, Jerron was mentioning how both of your styles match up very well together, and and I want to get your thoughts on that. Do you believe that this this type of fight, with looking at both of your guys' styles, will make for a type of fight that's going to be all action, very exciting? And do you look forward to those kinds of fights? Jerome um, said that your style is very similar. How do you think it will be like that? And is it really like a dream? Yes, we watched it. We watched it, but... И я считаю, что будет отличный бой. Он тоже любит работать в средней дистанции, любит драться. И у нас получится отличный бой, я считаю. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely we, we watched, we watched uh, Jerome's fight. I mean, and, and definitely this is the guy that will not shy away. He will not uh, try to, to, to stay on the outside and be cute. He will come and he will fight. And uh, that's that's one of the appealing things that we've had. And uh, that's what we like. So, you know, that's definitely going to be the fight. To work. Uh, no questions about it. A quick question for Stephen, if he's still available. Sure. Sure. You know, Stephen, you know, obviously since last summer, Showtime Boxing, you know, has been primarily working in, in Uncansville, Connecticut, and holding out these big boxing events, you know, on a regular basis. For yourself and the network, has it been easier or harder to sort of make these types of fights like we're seeing with Jerron Ennis and Sergey Lipinets, uh now that we're, you know, over half a year into this and have the legit logistics of making these types of boxing events change uh, when it comes to making events for the fight sphere? Well, it's it has become easier in the sense that, um, you know, the, the health and safety protocols, you know, all the arrangements that we go through, um, that, that TGB puts forward, that PBC puts forward, um, both for the fighters and their camps and the production. Um, everyone's used to that for the most part. You know, Boots has been through it. Sergey's has been through it. You know, anybody who's fought in the last year has been through that. Um, and I think the other thing is there's uh, there's a lot of good quality fights um, happening. You know, and I think when when things happen like this pandemic, you know, sometimes it makes people realize you know, how things can disappear in a moment's notice. So I think you do see fighters. But these two guys in particular, Sergey and Boots, um, these are these are two guys who've never said no to a fight anyway. 
So pandemic or no pandemic, like you, there, there's no problem getting them to take tough fights and exciting fights. So, you know, I think you'd be seeing this fight in no matter what situation we'd be in, because neither of these guys has any hesitation. You, uh, you ask them to take a fight and they take it. No questions asked. Thanks, Ethan. Thanks to Ron and Sergey. Best of luck to both of you. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, Carlos. And uh, apologies on not being able to get to all of the questions, but I think we got through a ton here uh, today. And, and thank everyone in the media for your time and joining. And, uh, and I'll toss it back to Brian to bring it home. Okay. Thank you, Greg. And certainly appreciate all you members of the media. Uh, want to say thank you to Jerron. Want to say thank you to Sergey Lipinets. I'm telling you, folks, it's going to be one heck of a welterweight battle on April 10th. Um, real quick, before we wrap this thing up, uh, Tom Brown, uh, of course, the promoter, TGB, give, give everyone just a, a final statement on what, what, what they should expect on April 10th. Well, we just have a tremendous card. And as Stephen said, it's a triple header starting out with a world title. And it's not just a world title fight. It's a, it's a, it's a mandatory world title fight. So it's an important fight. And then Stan Jonas, as, as Stephen just mentioned, it really was never intention of matching these guys on the same card. But as I was telling you yesterday, Brian, on a phone call, I think Stan Jonas, Ennis, Ortiz, these are the top young rising stars in the division. And, and uh, hey, I, I told you, I, I really felt Stan Jonas and Ennis maybe being, are a notch ahead as, as good as Ortiz was and as he looked the other day. So, I mean, it's, it's just real young rising stars and uh, – and we already said what we have with Ennis and Lipinets. It's uh, the minute they say go, we're going to have action. And uh, I just wish there were fans there. But uh, it, it's going to be great for the audience watching on Showtime. All right. Thank you, Tom. And, and Stephen, uh, I want to give you uh, a final word because I know it, it is one of those things where not only are people, when they tune in to Showtime, going to get a great fight. But that entire weekend, it is going to be a combat of fighting fans uh, something that they're going to look forward to because you're not only getting boxing on Saturday, but you're also getting MMA and Bellator on Friday. Yeah, it is. It's, a, it's truly a, a, a big fight weekend that takes on a different meaning when we have a big Bellator MMA card on Friday and a uh, you know high quality boxing card on Saturday, all at Mohegan Sun. Um, the excitement, you know, you just leave it tuned to Showtime all weekend. And I can't think of a better way to top this whole weekend off. Um, two of the most exciting fighters in this division, two of the most action-packed, fan-friendly fighters in this division. Um, this is guaranteed to be an exciting fight. All right. Well, folks, there you have it. We want, we want to thank you for joining us again April 10th. And it comes your way from the fight sphere at Mohegan Sun Showtime Championship Boxing, 9 o'clock Eastern. That is 6 o'clock Pacific time. Triple header of fights. We open with a world title fight. Uh, world title fight. We got another welterweight special attraction in the coma. And then the main event. You want to talk about a former world champion taking on a rising star of the division. Jerome Boots in is unbeaten, taking on the samurai. Sergey Lipinets, April 10th on Showtime Championship Boxing. I'm Brian Custer. I want to say thank you for joining us.